Welcome back. Regardless of severe weather or natural disaster that's hit, there can be common health and safety concerns, and that means common precautions that you can take from suffering injury or illness. Matt Maddich and Dr. Holzman are still with us to provide some tips. Welcome back, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, so we were discussing wildfires previous to the break, and, and Greg, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on what, what's really in wildfire smoke, this particulate matter. Talk yeah. a little bit about what that means and why that is dangerous to folks with, especially with um, pre-existing health conditions. Right. So, I mean, anything can be in it depending on what's burning. So you can get toxic materials depending on what's also burning on it. But some of the common things that we think about is the particulate matter. Mm -hmm. Some of the larger particulate matter and the smaller particulate matter. And then the other thing to always remember is carbon monoxide. So so the two points, if the, the thicker, bigger particle matter, those are the things that cause those irritation, your irritated eyes, your runny nose, your scratchy throat, that kind of stuff that lets you know that it's in the air. That stuff you feel like when you're around a campfire and in the smoke area of it or something like that. The small particulate matter can get down into your lungs and that's a problem in a lot of different ways. One, if you're prone to asthma, or sometimes you don't even know you're prone to mm -hmm. asthma, this might be your first experience, it causes irritation. You could get bronchial spasms and stuff like that, making it harder to breathe or an as asthma exacerbation. But it also can cause irritation and swelling and those type of things that make air more difficult to exchange. And so again, you're having lower oxygen getting into your, or concerned about getting oxygen there. Mm -hmm. The other one is carbon monoxide, and that's an odorless gas, but that has better binding to the hemoglobin, which is the actual molecules that carry your oxygen around your blood system to your muscles and specifically to your heart and, and brain. So somebody that might be more prone or a very high level of that carbon monoxide can start having carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, they might get really drowsy. You can also not be getting enough oxygen to important organs like your heart and somebody that might be more prone or already having difficulty uh, and they're under higher stress to their heart could have a heart attack. So these are things that people need to just be aware of and thinking about those symptoms mm -hmm. and what they're having. One, be prepared to mm -hmm. try to prevent as much as we possibly can, but two, also to be ready to call if they're having some symptoms uh, that might feel like a heart attack or, or other problems. Good information. Talking about being prepared, you know, I think sometimes people feel like getting some of those dust masks from mm -hmm. a local uh, hardware store or something might be helpful to prevent um, issues with wildfire smoke. Is that a, is that a myth or is that yeah, a reality? Yeah, those. Uh, it's it's a great thought, and I've even seen it when there was really bad. Somebody put a bunch of them up on a tree, just trying to be nice to their neighbor, saying, you know, use this if you need it. Um, but it actually can cause more harm, um, and it's definitely the things. The small particulate matter can still get through those dust masks. With it over your mouth, just as any mask, it's a little bit more difficult to breathe. Um, and so it really isn't very helpful on that. You can get what we call a, a ni uh, N95 mask, a respirator. Those type of masks are better uh, and, they, and they do work well. Some people will say they keep them in their house just in case if they needed to get through a, you know, a situation where they're gonna go through the smoke. But that's something you really should talk to your healthcare provider about okay. um, because it is harder to breathe through that. And Absolutely. so just trying to, and sometimes they need to be fitted and stuff of that sort. Um, but the dust mask, uh, they, they really don't help and okay. it's not helpful in the, for the wildfire smoke. Good, thank you. Uh, let's move on to springs and fl spring and flooding. Mm -hmm. And you know, obviously we've had flooding around the state of Montana, so maybe we can talk a little bit about what some of the health concerns are with, associated with flooding, either of you. Good, Matt. Um, so some of the, the health concerns that we are looking at with flooding, um, obviously, once the flooding goes away, mold, um, yes. mold within the household. Other, uh, other things that we are looking at are, uh, you know, debris within the floodwaters, you know, you know, making sure that we stay out of those floodwaters mm -hmm. uh, in case there are things that, you know, we can get poked on or, you know, cut ourselves. Um, so there, uh, so there are those health concerns with flooding. Um, also, uh, fast moving water um, so driving in flooded waters um, can take your vehicle away pretty easily um, so making sure that you know you use routes that aren't um, that aren't uh, in the flood zone um, uh, any yeah and so some of the other things that, and this would go with any emergency mm -hmm. it, but it, flooding is a good example of it know where your resources are so 
who can you call, what stations should you be yeah. listening to where you can get the information. A lot of times, people, the younger kids, you'll have to explain what it is, a transistor radio yeah. or something, you know, with the batteries that you can have if you're electricity, yeah. so you know what are the evacuation sure. routes that you can get out of and which ones you can't get out of. Um, other things with flooding, though, that also, uh, think about, you might think, well, we're not affected by the flooding. It didn't happen in my area. I know it's happening in another area in my community. Make sure that the water is okay yeah. because your water can get infected um, and there might be a boil order that you need to know about so that you're not drinking the tap water until it's been okay. Again, having those resources, whether we have a lot of state websites you can go to or um, in your community so you can find out what needs to be done and you're best prepared. Perfect. And so in, you know, in the last minute we have here in this segment, maybe we can just highlight earthquakes. Montana is a seismically active state. Mm -hmm. Any quick tips regarding earthquakes, safety preparedness, or any you know, resources quickly to point folks to that you would have to mention? Well, I, there's information on websites that we can give you and, and, and to look at. Um, again, and we'll, I think we'll talk a little bit more later on this, but having a plan. So you know, where are people going to meet? afterwards where's the safe place that you're going to go to in your home um, you know they talk about getting undercover and getting yourself locked drop undercover and yes. locked you want to be safe about that you don't want to be where things might fall over on top of you um, these are things that you want to think about during the earthquake then there's a lot of things you need to think about after the earthquake um, because there's risk, you know, know where your electrical, where you can turn that off if you need to, or your gas, um, and we could go on and thank on. Thank you, thank yeah. you. We'll pause for a quick yeah. break and talk a little bit more in a few minutes here. When we come back, the best way to recover from severe weather or disaster is to be prepared before anything ever happens. We have some readiness tips for you coming up next. Stay tuned.